stick with us while we talk with Taya. She's going to jump on. Here we go. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm very How are well, you? Thank you? I am recovering from a little cold, so I am less cloggy today, which I am really grateful for. <laughs> yes. 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 You are going to be 100% healthy we'll by the end of today. Jesus in Jesus' name. <laughs> name. Amen. Oh, we'll take it. <laughs> I am doing amazing. Actually, I'm really excited to talk with you today. Um, okay, what do you call it? Gas bag? Is that what that you I call yourself? It, and then I realized this is an Australian term. So we were in Lincoln, Nebraska together on Sunday night, currently on tour with Mercy Me and loving it, getting to tour um, this new record. And just, it's been such the the joy of my of my life in this season. Um, one of the joys of my life. Jesus, Ben, getting to do this for sure. <laughs> um, but it was so funny yeah. because the time just goes so quickly for me because if I start talking at all, um, even if, you know, it, it's about the Bible or something, I get so excited and then the time just like ticks away. And I said, I'm so sorry, we've only got two songs left. I'm such a gas bagger. And then... I've said it like maybe two other times on this tour and I realize every time that's an Australian term, it's not an American term and people probably think I have flatulence. So I just want to, I would just like to <laughs> clear the record. I do not have flatulence. Um, gas bagger is someone who talks way too much <laughs> as I'm a great example of that. <laughs> hey, I think it's good for us all to learn something new so there we go if you haven't learned anything today that's what you got to learn for today <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the journey a music special from andrea bocelli michael w smith taya of course is in the film uh tori kelly torin wells all of these amazing artists tell me about the film and how you got involved because i'm like this is such a beautiful group of yeah. people working together. So tell me about well, it. Well, I mean, when I tell people that I got to be involved in in the journey, um, and when I tell them what that entailed, um, that I got the opportunity to travel to Italy, I mean, keep in mind, this is back in 2021. And so we had, for me personally, being an Australian, we had to get special permission from the government to be able to even leave the country. Um, and that was approved, and not many people were being approved to leave. And we were going to Italy to ride horses with Andrea Bocelli to talk about our faith and um, yeah, and, and just life in general. And then we got to sing together. It sounds as crazy. Like it's, it's still to me, it still sounds crazy. And I'm like, I can't believe I got to be a part of that. But what was crazy is that no one knew that I was doing um, a solo record. Um, and this invitation came for myself and you know I've been a part of his song United for 10 years and so instantly I was like god what are you up to because this is you know um something out, out of the ordinary and I hadn't really told I thought no pressure was good pressure for me when making this record so I was just making it you know during 2020 all the world was locked down I was learning how to write and co-write on zoom and so like I, I'm like, how do people even know? Like, I don't understand what you're doing, but it was actually through getting to be a part of this project that for me personally, going to Italy and just, I think being open to perhaps what God was wanting to do um, in and through my life. And I'm someone who was really comfortable with, you know, I was under the umbrella of United and under our church and, just really comfortable with that. And I'm not like a CEO type. I'm more like a worker bee and I'll work so incredibly hard. Um, but I'm not really the vision caster type person. And I believe that God for me with this whole journey, um, he was taking me on one himself and he was lifting the horizon. And he was also lifting my eyes at the same time and saying, um, if I've called you to this, you don't need to freak out and stress out. Like I'll grace you for this. Um, and, you've always, I've always just said yes to God and I've really never known what it's going to look like or what the plan is, um, which is kind of what we all really, when we're following Jesus, it, that's what it is. It's a life of faith and we walk by faith and not by sight. And just to be up for whatever this would mean, 
And the funny thing is, um, because it's almost been two years, it will be two years in April since, you know, kind of the filming of this started happening in Italy. And um, there was a moment where I was like, Lord, because so much of my life changed because of that trip, I came back over before going back to Australia into lockdown and into hotel quarantine because we did things a little differently over there with COVID. Um, I got to go to Nashville and I wrote six eights of the record in three weeks. And then in four days, I think I recorded six eights of those songs, which is crazy and not what a vocalist would uh, desire to do. You'd want like some more time and the God was kind mm -hmm. and he graced me for it. And so I would never have finished the record and I wouldn't have got, you know, half of these songs that, you know, that I get to sing on tour right now, if I hadn't been, been a part of this and, God spoke to my heart whilst I was in America after being in Italy and my husband and I, um, we felt to move to America, which is such a crazy thing to say um, because we're Australian and we love Australia and my husband's even more Australian than I am and never thought he, like we would ever leave. And it was on that same trip that we just felt the Lord's like um, America. And then, you know, we go back to Australia fasting, praying and, and just like, how do we tell people that? And it wasn't necessarily yeah. like asking permission, even though I had a job in Australia at the time, it was like, we have to be obedient. We feel like this is what God's calling us to do. And we hope that you will give, give your blessing, but also like, I have to be obedient to what I feel prompted to do. And somehow God gave us that blessing um, and that favor. And we've been here for a year now. Just, yeah, it's crazy. And then... I mean, I'll just give you the full thing. And then that same week when I was in Nashville, um, a very, very generous couple, um, I just happened to see them. They were involved, you know, through TBN, um, very involved. Um, and that that's the production company behind the journey as well. And um, some of my dear friends, and I've known them for a, quite a few, few years. Uh, we did another movie together and what was crazy is that I saw them in church and because they were like family, I just said to them, apparently we're moving to America and I hadn't even told any family. And they looked at me, I got pulled to one conversation. I came back and they said, we've got a house in Orange County, six months rent free. It's yours. If you walk into off the plane and instantly I was like, well, firstly, I just hopefully say this as an encouragement to people who are <clears throat> to the ladies that are listening on. And maybe there's some guys as well, but, um, if God calls you to do something, he doesn't just say, I'm going to call you to this and I'm going to walk away and I'm going to give you a score at the end of it to see how you go. But he will enable you and he will grace you for it. And we serve a God who, you know, he's, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so often we minimize him to, oh, he doesn't care about the details. He doesn't, you know, but we have all these scriptures in like Matthew 6 where it says, um, look at the birds of the air. They don't gather and they don't sow and they don't reap. Yet they have, you know, a, a place to lay their head, and and they have enough food. How much more? And I've been meditating on them much more. How much more do I, your heavenly Father, know what you need? And and it was and it's uncomfortable generosity. And it's, you know, yeah, it's just it's the most beautiful house I've ever lived in. And got to have my parents there at the end of last year. And just God's kind because he sees everything. And um, yeah, we walk by faith by sight and by the grace of God, we're still in that, that place and it got extended. And um, it was a challenge as well, because again, it's uncomfortable when you're in that place of um, dependence on God and it's crazy generosity. And they said, but do you believe that you're being obedient to the voice of the Lord? And I said, yes and and ben my husband was having the conversation he's like yes we we actually believe that this is the god thing and we're trying to be obedient to that and as soon as he says that's it like we're happy to pack up and go home um, that we believe we're being obedient he said well you should be expecting this kind of stuff because is this not the god that we serve <laughs> amen i love that so much Hey, you have had a crazy ride for two years and I am so thankful. I mean, what a testimony of just being faithful to God, even when you don't know exactly how it's all going to play out. You don't know how it's all going to look. 
And now, now you can say in hindsight, look at what happened in the last two years and it's beautiful. <laughs> and really the journey, this, the journey, the film that we're talking about, this music special is, was kind of the beginning, sounds like kind of the beginning. And now it's like coming to full circle of look at what happened two years ago. And now it is finally coming out for everyone to see you're on tour you have a new album you have a film I mean how beautiful okay I also want to ask you how beautiful how amazing was it to be recording with all of those stars including yourself and in such a beautiful location yeah, tell me about that experience so the whole the whole preface of the journey is that we get to journey along the Via Francigena which was this beautiful old road that um, people would journey along to get to the Holy Land back in the day. And so it started in Vatican City. Um, and Andre, he's a devout Catholic, a man of deep faith. And he had this beautiful moment with Pope Francis and his wife. Um, they then <clears throat> they blessed the journey and then they started on this journey. And it was at just different connecting points that different people would meet them on the road. And um, I mean, I definitely was, Thank goodness he's an amazing horseman. Cause I was like, I don't really know. Like I had a couple of lessons to make sure that I was like, okay. But I was like, I don't want responsible for leading Andre astray on a horse, you know? Um, but also like, you know, a place where um, Italy is just thick with culture. Like it has such a rich culture, such a rich heritage, such an amazing background. So even just getting to be there and just like soaking all of, that up and eating the most amazing food and um it's also just the most visually stunning place um and and I'd heard that but I just being there riding on these horses looking out I've never seen so many rolling hills back to back in my entire life and so I just think mm -hmm. from what I've seen because I haven't seen it yet because I want to sit in the movie cinemas and get into it no you, <laughs> you haven't seen it uh because yeah wow. we go to wow. New York for the premiere so but then because I was on tour with Mercy Me we had to do this crazy dash to get to Ohio in time and so I actually missed the screening of it but I got to be there seeing Oceans um getting to open that night and then I just like rushed off so I'm excited to see it I'll be wow. grabbing my popcorn I'll probably be in Orange County shout out to other girls let's go see it together <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> it was just so good. It was amazing, but it, I, <clears throat> I also said this to um. I was talking to my friend Sheila, and I said, I also found it in a good way challenging because I feel like so many times, um, when we share our faith, sometimes if we've I don't know grown up in it or we've just been in church for a little while, there's all these little Christianisms that we say that, um, make sense to us, but to but to perhaps someone who's um, not saved or hasn't met Jesus yet, um, it's not really something that's palatable or easy for them to understand. And so I was challenged also because there's a um, slight, like Andre is so kind. He speaks Italian, he speaks English. I'm sure he speaks another language as well. Um, but there was a little delay um, whilst he was just like downloading what I was saying in English. And so I was challenged to not try to over, complicate something and I'm a very simple person so and again I'm not exactly sure what made it in there but I remember one conversation that we did have and it was just about I met Jesus when I was five and I was in my bedroom and I invited Jesus into my heart and my mom led me and it was through watching her worship in the living room and she's um hard of hearing she's deaf she's got hearing aids in both ears but I think maybe the best she's got 30 percent of hearing in one of them and that's kind of like the best ear but I remember learning a sacrifice of praise and and what worship was when she was playing the guitar in you know in our living room and she would just weep because she loved Jesus and she loved the presence of God um and that's how I learned that was real worship and it wasn't perfect because it wasn't she couldn't fully hear so it wasn't like pitch perfect or anything but it was beautiful because it was from the heart and it was something that she was like, I'm not going to stop worshiping Jesus just because I can't hear the exact notes, but he's worthy, beautiful. And so I just remember, yeah, f being so excited to get to be there, but also 
trying to make sure that, um, I don't know, sometimes it's a good challenge to like, if you had a friend that has never been to church, how would you explain Jesus to them? How would you share about this person that has transformed your life and changed your life and changed your habits and what you do and the things that you think are important? Um, how, how do you share that in a palatable way that's not shoving the Bible down someone's throat, but being like Jesus, you know, having meals with people, walking around your everyday life. Um, is, is he, is it broken bread and poor? Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah. And Taya, I will say, I feel like your album is a wonderful introduction to Jesus. If somebody doesn't know Jesus, what if they listen to your album? And it is so beautiful. And uh, one of the things I do is on Apple Music, you can see all the I lyrics. So I pull up the lyrics. I'm like, what are the actual words? Because I want to know and worship alongside you in those moments. And I think that would be a wonderful way. Anybody listening right now, if you have never accepted Jesus into your life, if you have never received him as your Lord and Savior, let's do that we're going to close in prayer in, in a few moments, but, um, and we would love for you to come alongside us and follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I think your album will be a great start for them. Um, I think this film, The Journey, would be a wonderful start for them. I think them attending a Mercy Me concert with featuring Taya would be a wonderful uh, option. What else do we have, Taya? You have something else coming up, yes, right? That that's they could very kind. You, right? I mean, if people find Jesus in everything that we put our hands to, like that's the, that's the goal. That's the prize. Cause he's literally changed mm -hmm. our lives. And so who are we to, you know, do nothing but hope that he would transform some, someone else's life um, through anything that we get to be a part of. And so you're very kind for mentioning those things that I get to be a part of. And I have a really fun um, tour that's coming up as well. So I'm currently on with most of me got, two more weekends left. Um, you can check out our Instagram, whether it's most of these Instagram or my Instagram, cause we've got all the dates there. Hopefully we, we get to see you. There's a few more cities. Um, but then just in case we miss you coming into April, May, I'm actually going on tour with some very special ladies. We call it, we call it the, it's time tour. It's the ladies tour. It's with Tasha Cobbs Leonard, Naomi Rain, Natalie Grant, myself, then we've also got Tamala Mann, and we've also got Katie Torwart as well. Um, and I, I have a feeling it's the first time that a whole bunch of girls have gone on tour together. And we're just being super prayerful and expectant about what it is that God would want to do in and through each one of us. And it's amazing because I think it's a, a picture of the body of Christ. You know, we are all different. We come from different walks of life and even different genres of music. Um, but we have the one person that unifies all of us, just like when we come together at a, at a church or, you know, um, the one thing that unifies us is Jesus. And when we get to lift up his name and also I'm, I can't wait for all the harmonies. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> like these, they're amazing singers. Sometimes when we're just like all hanging out and, we did some covers of each other's songs and I was going last, thank goodness. I was like, see you guys, like you guys leave the building. I'll just do this one here. But I'm listening to them, I'm like, they're so good. And it's so beautiful and pleasant when someone, um, <clears throat> you know, knows how to wield their, their instrument for the Lord and with excellence. And yeah, the singer in me just like leaps for joy at that. So I'm just excited. It's going to be so, it's going to be hilarious. It's going to wow. be, there's going to be light and shade and just all. <laughs> are those, are the dates and locations out and available yet for that? They are. Okay. Yes. So they can find them on your Instagram yes. and as well. If, yeah. If okay. you had to, um, it. it's time official. We've even got an Instagram account just to be able to like direct people to where, where the venues are and the dates and everything. So there's a lot there. <laughs> yes, I love it. And what was um, the it's, Instagram it's handle? It's time on? official. And I'm pretty sure it's it's.time.official. But if you time official, you'll be Love able it. to find that. And it's on my page as well. So yeah. Okay, perfect. I have one last question for you in the film, in the journey. There is a lot of talk about hope. 
So how would you define hope? Because we can define hope in worldly ways and we can define hope through a lens of faith. So when you think about hope, um, you've mentioned hope a couple times as we've been talking. How would you define hope in through the lens of faith for anyone who doesn't feel like they have a lot of hope? Maybe they feel hopeless or desperate to find hope. What would, how would you encourage them through the lens of hope? Lens of well, faith. Um, hope. I mean, I love that the Bible talks about it so much. Um, that hope is the anchor of the soul. The thing that will, you know, an anchor is something that holds a massive boat um, steady and connected to the ground. So even if there's like some waves, like it might move a little bit, but actually it's not, it's not being moved um, from that one anchored point. And I believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. Um, and I know that there's many scriptures that would point to that. But also the fact that um, because of Jesus, we have everything. We don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. Jesus has overcome the world. You know, it says that we will, we won't have a perfect life. I'm sorry if I'm bursting a couple of bubbles. <laughs> um, we will have bubbles and tribulations and we live in a fallen world. Um, we're simple human beings and that's why we even needed Jesus in the first place to come and be the perfect sacrifice, live the perfect life, die, become that one-time perfect sacrifice, be raised to carrying a place for us in heaven, resurrected the King. Um, but also how great that when he said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you, um, it's good that I go because I'm going to send you the helper. And so again, I think I said it before, but like, if you feel like you have no hope, I just want to, I have to remind you about just the truth and the reality that I do know that we have Jesus and he is someone who is well acquainted with grief. Maybe you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but the promise, you know, in the Bible is that we have a good shepherd who walks with us. And <clears throat> it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your Stuff, they comfort me we have so many promises about who our God is even in the midst of um, grief even in the midst of uncertainty um, and and you're saying it hope through the lens of faith like we're to walk by faith and not by sight which is a beautiful thing to say another thing to walk out because then you're like well I'm never gonna know what's you know what's in front of me but the one sure thing is that we have a God that says I will never leave you nor forsake you and I think there has to come a point in our mm -hmm. Christianity, in our personal walk with Jesus, where um, we either believe the Bible is the truth or we just think that it's lovely words. But we believe, you know, it, it says that the Bible is living, active, sharper than a two-edged sword. And we either believe that, believing that it can cut through our doubt and our defense and leaving us open to, the, to allow God to speak or we believe that it's a little thing that I sometimes read, but um, just from personal experience, when I grab onto certain, you know, I would also say like, um, you could type into Google hope and you could type into Google um, hope Bible verses and there would be a million, truly like so many Bible verses, maybe not a million, I was a little exaggerating, sorry. So many Bible verses would come up and I dare to believe that if you wrote them out, even just one, and you said it every morning and you said it, um, you know, be a little Jewish, say it in the morning and then say it at night before you go to sleep. Um, Jesus did that many times with many different prayers and many different verses in the Bible. And I dare to believe that in one week, your outlook and even just your belief in who God is, because you're putting your trust in, in, um, in his word, like, if we believe that the Bible's living and active, that's going to do something on the inside. That's going to, um, that's going to, you know, we believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. That's going to be the anchor to your soul and for your soul. And you're anchoring it to the person who doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I would also say the power of confession is so, like, it says in the Bible that we have the power to speak life or death, speak life and so yeah. it's so important what you what you're speaking what you're speaking of yourself it's so important what you're listening to um and i mean i just also want to say this like i grew up in australia i grew up 
um, I didn't have Christian radio. So I was, you know, I listened to the Beatles. I listened to Fleetwood Mac. And, and I think God can meet you in any scenario, especially considering that classical music was um, Christian music back in the day, but no one talks about it that way these days. Um, but I would also say in particular seasons, if, you, there's, if you're in a season where you aren't feeling hopeful and you actually need to believe that there is a hope in it, um, you know, that God has a plan for your life, which he says all throughout the Bible that he does, and it's planned for good and, and to prosper you and not to harm you. Um, I would say be careful of the things that you are listening to, maybe putting on Christian music just, just for that week or for that month in that time that you feel heavy. Um, <clears throat> the Lord also says in the Bible that for a spirit of heaviness, he will give us an exchange, a garment of praise. But I think we have to be um, proactive in pursuing the presence and placing ourselves in his presence. So I would also say, you know, turn up the worship music loud in your car, turn up the worship music loud in, in your home and yeah, just be mindful. Like, especially if you're in that place where you're just like, I'm really struggling to grab a hold of hope, like um, guard your heart for out of, out of your heart flow, the issues of life. And so, um, yeah, just in certain seasons, in those kind of seasons, like be mindful of what you're watching, be mindful um, of what you're speaking and listening to. And, and that's kind of just, yeah, a general thing, but I hope, I hope you felt the hope there. <laughs> I feel like, like I could just respond back to each of those. Like we could just sit here for hours talking about these things. I'm like, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> right on sister. Like you've, you've got it. And I couldn't agree more. So I'm so thankful we got a chance to chat and talk and share um, about what's going on in your world. I, I'm so thankful and am so encouraged and inspired. I feel like when we hear how God is moving in others' lives, it's an opportunity to be encouraged because if he can do it for you, he can do it for me. If he can do it for Taya, he can do it for everybody listening right now. The things that the Lord has in store for you, he has a specific design and plan for you. And when you listen, when you are in God's presence, like Taya, you were just talking about, when you believe that Jesus is the answer to everything, follow him. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple, but follow him. And wow, everything changes in life. So that is my hope when I follow him. It all works out the way he wants it to be. Not exactly the way I wanted it to be, but the way he wanted it to be. And it's so much better. It's so much better when we follow what he wants for our life than what we want for our own life. So thank you for um, being here today. I'm so thankful that we got a chance to yeah. chat. Will you close I us in prayer that. before it's we It's been so lovely to get to um, chat with you as well. Because anytime that we get to talk about Jesus, um, I, you know, we're two or three gathered and there's a few more here. Um, he's close and, and I love that. I mean, like you, you were talking about um, hoping that this would be encouraging for other people in Revelation. It talks about they overcame by the blood of the lamb, Jesus, and the word of their testimony. And there's something edifying about when we get to, and I hope that's, that's the case that it's been encouraging for people. And so I'm just going to close in prayer. Um, all right, let's go. You can rise. You can keep your eyes open 100% off the screen, but on the windscreen. <laughs> Lord Jesus, um, we just love you. I thank you that you're here and that you're with every single person under the sound of my voice, Lord. I thank you that you are sovereign, that you are in control and there's nothing, um, there's nothing that happens that you are not aware of and that has not passed through your sovereign hand. And so... Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you that each of us that are listening here, that we've been given this gift, Lord. And I thank you that in your word, it talks that um, it says in Lamentations that your mercy is in you every morning. Great is your faith. And so I just thank you, Lord, that you've been so faithful to each one of us, Lord, even if you did nothing else except be obedient to your Father's will and die on the cross and rising again and ascending into heaven, um, you have made a way for us to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And not only that, you don't just um, save us and leave us, but you actually lead us through this life. And you completely understand everything that we would ever go through, Lord. You are a man acquainted with grief. And yet, Lord, you were 
perfectly obedient to your father's will. And so I just thank you, Lord Jesus, um, for any little thing that people would be going through right now, Lord, any little thing that, or maybe it's a, a massive thing, Lord, I thank you that they can bring it to you, that you are not shocked by anything that would um, go through our heads or perhaps even something that we would say, Lord, but rather you have a, the best way forward for us, Lord Jesus. We're talking about hope, Lord. And so I just pray for anyone that feels just a spirit of despair, Lord. I pray that that would go in the name of Jesus. I pray that their heads would be lifted, Lord, and that they would be able to fix their eyes on you and realize that you are not only the author of their faith, but you are the perfecter of their faith um, and the finisher, and which you're here at the beginning, you're here at the end, and you're here all the way through, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your spirit that you would minister to people today, even right now, Lord Jesus. That I thank you that you understand everything, that you know everything, and even when we don't, that we can lean into you, Lord God. We can lean into the fact that you know and you see everything, and you're not shocked by anything, God, and you're not freaking out. We thank you again that you are sovereign, that you're above it all, Lord. And I thank you that you have a perfect will and way for us, Lord. And I pray that we would be um, humble enough to submit ourselves to to your perfect way. Because like Alita was saying, Lord Jesus, even though you work in a different time sphere, even though your ways are higher than ours, Lord, because you see everything and we don't, Lord. I pray that we would submit ourselves and be humble and allow you to have full reign in our lives, Lord. I thank you that there's no wholeness. Um, there's no limit to the wholeness that you bring. I thank you that there's nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing that you cannot restore to better than before, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that even when we go through the way of the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil, Lord. You've taken the sting out of death, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that you are the God that says you are with us. You have peace that is beyond understanding. And so I thank you that whatever it is that we need, Lord, we don't find anywhere else, but we find it in you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that we would look to you today. I thank you that you are, again, the, the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith, Lord Jesus. We want to please you with our lives in every area, God. May we look at people today and see people that you have died for, that you love, Lord Jesus. May, may you give us hearts that love them like you, Lord Jesus. And I just pray that your will would be done, Lord Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. May your kingdom come, may your will be done, Lord Jesus. That's what we want, and that's what we pray for, um, to be fulfilled in and through each one of our lives, Lord. May you receive all the glory and all the praise, Lord Jesus. I thank you that your face is towards each one of us, God. Your countenance is upon us, Lord. And I thank you that each person that looks to you, God, their faces are radiant, for they will not be filled with shame. Thank you that it says that in your word, Lord. We cling to you, Jesus. You are everything. And when we have the good shepherd, which is who you are, we have everything that we need. I thank you that we go from this place today into every scenario, into our families, into our workplaces, our universities, our schools, our jobs, whatever it is, God knowing that we are covered, that you go with us, you go before us, you come behind, and you're beside us. What a promise we have in you, Jesus. We love you. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Taya, I am wildly cheering you. Thank you for joining us. I'm so thankful we got a, a chance to chat about all the things that are going on with you. Um, everybody go to see the film, The Journey. It is April 2nd to 9th. Buy your tickets. Go click on the link in our bio. You can buy the tickets right there. And um, thanks, Dan. And see you. Bye, everybody. Uh, thanks so much. Bye. Okay. Bye.